Robert Earl Davis Jr., better known to the world as DJ Screw, is one of the greatest DJs to ever touch the turntables. With the help of his screwed up click, he was able to create a sound that has been incorporated in multiple genres of music and is one of the most recognizable sounds in music today. Unfortunately, on the morning of November 16, 2000, his life tragically ended with many theories over the years about the cause of his death and the night he passed away. In this mini documentary compiled of interviews with some of the closest people to him, we take a deep dive into what his life was like leading up to his untimely death and what ultimately happened to one of hip-hop's greatest contributors. I'm Donnie Houston, and this is DJ Screw's Last Days. Talk about, um, you know, just kind of like towards the end, man, like uh, just kind of how it was. Because there's that video of y'all, like somebody said this was supposed to be like a few days before he died, but it's like you, Anjali, Point Blank. I think Wellene might have been over there. Talk about just how y'all were, because it seemed like it's this was kind of the crew uh, at the what, end. What you know? had happened was, uh, you know, I had told you, uh, I don't know who it was, Universal, was it Priority, or one of them had came over. You talking about the guy? In the garage, Universal, in the yeah. garage. We was in there playing pool and shit. The dude came in, and uh, he said, screw, uh, you know, he from the majors. He said, screw, uh, here's a million dollar check. He said, man, look, we want us, we want, an album from you with all the screwed up click members. They wanted basically like a three in the morning. All work, no play. They wanted that kind of album and they wanted members from the screwed up click and they was coming to the source. And uh, Screw was just looking at the man. He started laughing. Screw said, man, shit, I make that shit at my motherfucking shop, man. I don't need no million dollars. He laughed at that shit. And then the dude said, okay, Screw, two billion. And he stopped at the two million. I think he probably went up to three. And Screw laughed and said, no. It was only Anjali left. It was me. It was Chris Cooley. It was Shorty Mac, and Doug. Them with Doug. It, you know, his little, his little cousin Doug and Big Bub. Uh, that was the remaining people. And Chris Cooley. That was the remaining people around him because uh, when that happened in the garage, man, it was already like kind of like a falling out. Everybody was mad at different things and. You know what I'm saying, man? Everybody kind of, the last member, they were kind of like gone at di different ways and stuff. It it wasn't nice in the end. Nobody was there. I was there. You know what I'm saying, man? I was there. I, 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 I was there at shows. You know what I'm saying? He worked so hard. He would go to sleep on turntable. He would fall asleep on turntable in the middle of the show. And fucking uh, grab his ass, go to the backstage, wake his ass up. And he oh, get back on stage and act a goddamn fool. I was there. I am my brother's keeper. Yeah. And uh, um, shit, I was on him, man. I was on him tough. Like, man, shit, he couldn't be in the bathroom 20 minutes, man, 10, 15 minutes. If, you know, I'm knocking on the door. Hey, you all right, man? He screwed, go to sleep on the fucking toilet bowl, man. I hear the door hit one day, boom. I say, hey, screw, he don't say nothing, man. Shit, you know what it is. I kicked the motherfucking door in, boom, in the bathroom. I go, get the fuck up. What are you doing? He fell off the toilet bowl. He had to get the door. He sleep like a motherfucker, man. You hmm. know what I'm saying? I wake him up, man, and when he take care, clean up, and wake, come out of there, I say, man, what the fuck was that? He looked at me and started laughing. He said, man, Al, I was tired of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> It started like September of 2000. We had repeatedly, repeatedly drinking bad drink. Cause me and him can't use the restroom. And as this was going, I'm steady telling him like, screw I'm sick, but then I ain't. He was like, I'm fucked up. So I say, I think I'm the I made it screw. I got a, a cross on my stomach. He was like, what that mean? I say, God ain't gonna let nothing get to me. So he, he said, he was like, oh, you you believe in God? I was like, of course. So he was like, why you act like you act? So I don't know, fam. So he was like, that's good, Chuck, man. I was like, yeah, appreciate it, fam. And so he was like, he said, I see a school, you know, I'm gonna go take the kids to school in the morning, I'll be back after I drop the kids out. So we had did this thing again. So I had eaten up meeting him on South Main. Kyler dude got to drink. We didn't drink that. We had got some more other drink, but we still had that. So we were trying to see what was hurting our stomach. 
Now, after this was going on, school had ended up going to, in the hospital. And I was just so sick. I'm talking about I was sick. It was just God just wake, just giving me extra strength, bro. Because I, I tell you, sometimes I don't even remember waking up. You know what I'm saying? I was so high. I'm like, college school, he not answering. And I was just like, fuck it. Sleep for about four, five days. Wake up. Sleep about another two weeks. And it got to the point that it was like right at November the 14th, man. 2000. I, went, I came over there after I dropped my baby out like three in the evening at the baby shelter. From the baby shelter, I went straight to school. So we had that whole day. That night, the 15th of November, like 4.30 in the morning, I had whispered to him, like, screw up in the burn. But before then, he was like a little boy. He was like a brand new baby. You know what I'm saying? He was working on a documentary and everything. And, you know, he was just like another person. I'm like, damn, that's the screw I miss. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, fam, back. Man, I ended up telling him, man, I was like, screw, I got to go, man. You know, I got to drop the kids off at school in the morning. And he just gave me that look like, don't go. He said he said it then. He went on and told me how this mom. He said, don't go, Chuck. I said, screw, I'm trying to tell him. I said, why people were saying I was doing bad stuff, this is what I have been doing. Dropping the baby off in the morning. In the evening, I pick him up. We'll go to Yellowstone Park, shoot a couple of jumpers, let him see how it is to play with a team instead of me and him, and stuff like this. So screw was like, okay, man. He said, come back for real. I say, screw, I'm coming back, man. So at me, when I get home, I'm stoned. I'm talking, I'm out of it. One thing I remember, I fell on the floor and my phone was on the table. And, you know, that motherfucker kept ringing. I'm like, really want to throw it out the door. But kept ringing. Then I looked, answered the call. Hey, man, screw this. So I'm like, I heard that so many times about him and Mo. I'm like, threw the phone back down. It just kept on. And I got, man, I'm like, man, what's up? He's like, screw dead, man. And I said, man, I just left there by like 5 in the morning. It was like by like 8 30 now. I'm like, hell no. Nah. He said, yeah, man. He said, get out of here right now. It just was a strange night that night, you know. When I, you know how you look back at somebody's past and you play back everything frame for frame? It's like, it was crazy to me. Because, like I say, Drew and them, like the way the, I get into how the, outfit, how the spot was made in a minute. But long story short, we sitting on the crates. And uh, I never forget his phone rang. He had, he he had fell asleep. We listening to going down through the mix. Long story short, he phone rang. He dropped his phone. I pick it up, tap his lead, give him the phone back. He do the same thing, talking file out. So I get on the phone with whoever it is. They like screw fell asleep on me. I'm like yeah, pretty much. You know what I'm saying? They like man, when he get up, hit me. Okay, boom, bet. I get a call. Two little chicks that I was talking to. You know, back then we said hype. That was the word. So, a hey, uh, little chick hit me. Her cousin want to talk to Drew. So, I go tell Drew, woo, woo, woo. You know what I'm saying? Drew, like, that's a bit. So, I tell, this one, it gets strange to me. I tell Screw, I'm like, man, we supposed to go dip. We got some hype. He like, for real? I'm like, yeah. He like, that's a bit. Y'all coming back? I'm like, yeah. So when he hugged me, he hugged me, he grabbed my shoulders. You know, he's shorter than me. He look up at me like, I love you. Hmm. Like, I love you too. He like, nah, I love you for real. So I'm like, in my head, I'm like, maybe it's just, you know, we've been sipping. And I'm like, maybe I'm just tripping. He do the same thing to Drew. Same way. Jumping up. Matter of fact, me and Archie Lee, me and Archie Lee had both had the same car. We both had Thunderbirds, the two dope Thunderbirds. So uh, I jump in the bird. Like the way I tell you, the way the back made, he got the door open. We at the back side, back there where the gate had to separate the sound waves and all that in the back side of the building. He just standing in the doorway, kind of staring at us. I don't say nothing to Drew, but in my head, I'm like, this is weird. 
know what I'm saying? We burn, go do what we do. So I had to come back up 59. I was staying by Highway 6 in Bel Air. So we had to pass back by there mm -hmm. to, to go get to back the spot. Over there. Mm -hmm. At the time, you know, I'm with uh, my oldest son, mother. So it's like, Drew like, I mean, yeah, Drew like, man. I'm like, you want to go mess with Screw? He like, nah. He like, man, sis going to kill you. I'm like, bitch, you know what I'm saying? We dipped to the house. So I dipped, kept pushing, get to the house. I leave, I leave Drew my phone. You know, cause VM, she gonna be going through the phone. This, that, it's already about four, five in the morning. So I get, in, I lay down. You know how you feel like you just lay down? It's like I feel like I had just hit Drew beating on the door. Boom, 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 boom. He like y'all good? I'm like yeah. He like uh, open the door. I'm like the door open. He open the door. He on the phone with feet. He like my mama say screw did. I'm like, man, come on, man. We just left screw. You know, they can say it that one or two times. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, we just left screw. He throw me the phone. My fee on the phone. She like, man, slide over there and go check on my dude, man, for real. Like, see what's up. Like, ain't no, this ain't no gossip. We slide back over there. So I flew out to the uh, studio. They wouldn't, they didn't want to let me in the door at first, but then, you know, me, you can't stop me on nothing like that. So I tell the loud man, move. Go in there. And I was like, where he at? He's like, here and there. So he's going in there, he in the restroom, man. I'm like, the fuck? I'm like, damn, bro. I'm like, what the fuck, man? Then, you know, I had put it in my mind, like, when I seen him, the average person wouldn't pass away like that. Man, screw past way hugging the toilet, man. I'm, I'm saying to myself, I had end up telling my kid folk Bub, I was like, man, screw died hugging the toilet. When you die like that over uh, overdose, you you gonna fall right there on the spot. You know what I'm saying? He was like, maybe he just made it to the uh restroom. And he started asking me who was there when when I live, I was like, I couldn't think of nobody but Al, Ald. That's the only way I can remember. I think my other kid for Chris Cooley was there too. It rained the whole time. Like not just hard, but drizzle. I never forget that. So when we pull up, it's drizzling. I see the corner van, I'm like, it's too cold right here. So Chris Cooley come to the window. Right now it's too, it's too serious to press him about it the logistics on what happened. So he like, man, screw dead. I'm like, man, come on, man. He like, man, screw dead. I'm like, I finally catch up with Chris Cooley. I'm like, what's good? Like, what happened? He like, man, y'all live. And cause that's at a minute where you hear different rumors about somebody supposed to pause and screw or somebody put something in his drink and all them different rumors. This how this come around because when he, he say when we live, you know, you know, Fee say that he called her. He was supposed to come by there and holler at her. He never made it. But, you know, school had, had a couple seizures before his death when Al was with him. And Al brought him back both times. You know what I'm saying? So when, when he passed, that's what we thought did happen. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, he had a bad heart in, in other situations, other things, too. But, you know, as we at the shop, the dude who worked at the place, at the uh, corner office, he was a fan of Screw. You know what I'm saying? He was like, damn. He said, man, I have something to tell y'all. And, you know, I really want to shake his hand. You know what I'm saying? I know he just got to clean his fam up. You know what I'm saying? So I'm telling him, let me shake, let me shake your hand. He was like, why you want to say, cuz you just cleaned them up, right? He was like, yeah. I was like, that's why. I was like, let me shake your hand, man. So he shook my hand. So he tell them, tell the family that he was pausing. So I'm pausing. Then I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, man, it got to be true because the man died hugging the toilet stool. I seen a couple of movies. When people OD, they don't run to no toilet. They just fire right there. So as it was going on, everybody was like, just leave it alone. Just put it in God's hand. Woo -woo. That was cool. 
but then it's not. Because you got people with rap sounds saying this nigga, this is the reason why he dead. That ain't the reason why he dead, you know what I'm saying? If that was the case, let that ride. But it's not, so he was murdered. You know what I'm saying? So somebody that pardoned him, you don't think he'll pardon somebody else? You know what I'm saying? And, and it was just like, that's what he would like to tell people. It's nobody you can trust no more. And, and, and as it's happened, I'm like, I mean, you could have never know who would do nothing like that, bro. You know what I'm saying? It was never even said about no, not never. I don't think you can, I was all the way here. Screw dive, smoking strands and drink. You know what I'm saying? That, and that fuck with me. I ain't gonna lie. I'd be wanting to come show up to whoever said that like that, but they don't know. You know what I'm saying? Them people don't know. That man was murdered. Just like Pimp C. Him and Pimp C had the same stuff in their blood. Matter of fact, R.I.P. to Pimp C. Same thing in their blood. So that's a big thing to this to this hill because now it's like what they used to say. You got to get them out the way for you to get have something done.